Now we're going to get into the part that people struggle with a lot. And I'm going to kind of try and simplify it for you as best as I can. Posing uh, is a difficult thing for a lot of people. Especially when I said, uh, when I started, um, and I still struggle with this. Posing uh, women is tough for me, naturally. Um, for some women, they say posing men can be difficult for them. But they're natural at making a woman look natural. You know. Um, the point is uh, that in the professional world, you don't have to necessarily go crazy. It's a lot easier to master with just a couple of ideas. So um, don't let the uh, one thing sort of keep you from being able to do this. And I've seen this m very easy to correct, seen this mistake made plenty, plenty of times, is posing for professional headshots. And honestly, just the, just the starting point is such an easy thing to do. Um, and I'm going to break it down for you. Start at the bottom. Even though we're shooting headshot, posing is going to start with the feet. If you start from the bottom and work your way up, you're going to make your life a lot easier. Has anybody been trying to pose a client before and they just aren't doing it? You know, like, oh, could you just eh, 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 like that? And then they end up sort of standing like, is this what you wanted? And it happens all the time. Um, I just can't get over how much they look like a news team. Sorry. All right. Not a news team, uh, but, but they could play one on TV. All right. I want to talk a little about male, male and female posing. There's a traditional way to look at posing, the difference between men and women. And I fall back on that a lot. But I don't want to get into, um, I don't want to be um, overly stereotypical. I don't want to throw gender roles because you're going to run into clients that are going to be an exception to every rule. Okay? We live in a world of amazing diversity and especially in, in the United States. So don't pigeonhole yourself into the rules. I want to set down a couple of basic rules for every single human that works. But we are going to talk a little bit, especially when we start shooting, about how I pose men versus how I pose women. And this is a sort of like general rule, but you're going to find exceptions to that. You're going to find women that look better in a masculine pose, and you're going to find men that are more natural in what would be considered a traditionally feminine pose. So when I say that, I'm not trying to put anybody into any holes. I'm telling you what will work for most people, and I'm going to tell you that to keep your mind open for something that could come in and make the image better. All right? Are we cool with that? So here are the things that you need to do when posing. Analyze your subject. This is an art that is dying. And if you learn to do this, you will set yourself apart from every other photographer you know, pretty much. People, they have a setup of lights in their studio, and somebody walks in, and that's what they shoot. Because their lights are already set up. Look at somebody. Look at their body. Look at their face. Look at their eyes. What are their best characteristics? What are the weaknesses? What are the things that they, you think they may not like? What are the things that they might be insecure about, don't ask them. <laughs> what? Are you insecure? Your neck is kind of like blah, 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 waddly underneath. Does that bother you? Do you want me to shoot up into it? Or like, you know, like, you don't want to do that. You have to look at your subject. Oh, I shoot a lot of people and nobody is without facial aberrations. Do you realize that the ideals of physical facial beauty are based on symmetry? Did you ever think about that? One side being exactly like the other? And so when somebody is quote unquote less attractive, their face tends to be less symmetrical. That's sort of how it works. That's in our minds, that's how we look at things. Every difference in your face, your nose points one way. Your, I'm not looking at anybody specifically. Your, one of your eyes is smaller than the other. You have an ear up here and an ear down here. You, have a, you, you, know, you could park a bicycle between your two front teeth. There's so many different things about people, that, but those differences make somebody unique and can make them beautiful. So you have to pay attention to all of those things. Because I've met people that have some really what would be traditionally non-beautiful things about them that they're really proud of. That's like who they are. Like a, a nose that goes like this. Like Owen Wilson, you know that guy, the actor? Like, my goodness gracious. That guy, but you know, you could look at that guy and be like, that's a pretty handsome guy and it's charming and that sort of makes him who he is, you know? I mean, there are so many things that make people beautiful and diverse and I don't want you to think that I'm being negative. But it is your job to flatter your client. And so we're going to talk about that. Analyze them and decide how you're going to light them, how you're going to pose them based on looking at them. I, when somebody comes into the studio, not necessarily in volume, when somebody comes into the studio, I talk to them for five minutes. Just, hey, how you doing? How's the weather? And while they're talking and telling me about the crap in their life that I don't care about, I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, how can I flatter that person? How can I make them look best? How am I going to serve them? 
analyze people's facial features. Because if somebody has an eye that's maybe a little smaller on this side, if you put that eye camera forward, then you are visually evening out the two eyes together. And people don't think that. If you have somebody whose ears are slightly lopsided with a little head tilt, you can visually correct that. Here's a thing that might blow your mind. Did you know when you look in the mirror, your brain corrects your facial aberrations for you? And then you stare at yourself for 10 seconds, then they start to pop up. But when you just glance at yourself in the mirror, your brain makes it OK. That's why everybody thinks, nobody thinks they're ugly, do they? Like, you don't get to be, oh, God, no. People go, all right, I'm OK. I look good. And then you see yourself in a picture, and you go, ah! Because you know? your brain's correcting that for you. It's wild. It's with, with the, the amazing self-preservation of our emotional state of being. Our minds are incredible. But be sensitive to, to your clients and analyze them. If you are taking the time to look at someone and figure out how to make them look their best, especially when it comes to headshot, because you're really close to their face, uh, you're going you're gonna to come out ahead of a lot of other people. Flatter their features. This is important. Now, some people, by talking to them, you're going to find out, are they confident? Are they insecure? Are they nervous? But you have to flatter their individual features. If someone has a larger body, you may take a slightly higher angle. If someone is skinny, you might want to shoot them straight on to make them look a little more broad, to fill up the frame a little bit more. There are all kinds of ways to treat people. Consider their position. This is important. And when, by position, I mean their job title. If someone is a, uh, a powerful attorney who is a, you know, blob, you know, running for governor or something, you're not necessarily going to want to make them look friendly and demure. You know? If someone is a real estate agent, it's their job to look pleasant and approachable. So you want to factor that into your lighting and your posing. A more dramatic light with hard shadows and a, and a harder expression is not going to be good for Martha from Century 21. You know? But if you have a guy come into your studio who writes mystery novels, that would be really cool for him. Do you understand? Consider their position. Consider what they do for a living to, to decide how you're going to like them and how you're going to shoot them. Listen to their opinions. This is a thing that photographers fail to do so much. If they tell you they prefer one side, you better shoot the side that they prefer. They will tell you sometimes. If, the, if somebody, people, especially the ones you really hate, that a picture being taken, anybody ever come into your business or come in for a photo shoot and they just start talking about their flaws right away? Like, oh, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> I got to lose 20 pounds. And blah, 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 blah. They're telling you what they don't want and what they do want. And you have to listen. And if you fail to listen, you're going to fail to please your client. 